from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the 15th National Book Festival. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for being here. My name is Kathy Meisner. I review picture books, 12 a year, count them, for the Washington Post book world. The Washington Post is a charter sponsor of the National Book Festival. Christian Robinson, our first speaker, lives in San Francisco. His illustrations have won awards, including an Ezra Jack Keats first illustra new illustrator award, a Boston Globe Hornbook honor, a Seibert honor award, and a Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award. He has portrayed historical figures like Josephine Baker in Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker, familiar figures like everyone's best grandmother, but really his own, in Last Stop on Market Street, and now you see them, now you don't. Figures like the little boy ghost, Leo, who has a very real friend, Jane, in the new book, Leo, a ghost story, written by Mac Barnett. Christian has worked with Pixar Animation and the Sesame Street Workshop. He's a trivia expert on fish. And he's also a dancer who can cut a rug like nobody's business. And whether he dances or draws, there's something that shines through Christian's talent, and that is a sense of wonder and warm-heartedness. Please welcome Christian Robinson. Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys today, and I'm really excited to share my newest book, written by Mac Barnett, Barnett illustrated by me. Uh, what is an illustrator? Does anyone up here know? Can you raise your hand if you think you know what an illustrator is? What does an illustrator do? Yeah. Draws pictures for a book. That's absolutely right. So I draw the pictures, and Mac, the author, writes the words. So I'm going to share the, our latest book that we just did together. The title is Leo. A ghost story. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, you can follow the story on the screens. Leo, a ghost story. This is Leo. Most people cannot see him. But you can. Leo is a ghost. For many years, Leo lived by himself in a house on the edge of the city, reading books and drawing pictures in the dust. One day in spring, a family moved in. Leo was glad to have company. On the family's first night, he made them mint tea and honey toast. Leo thought he was being a good host, but the family saw things differently. They hid in the bathroom and locked the door. This house is haunted, said the man. Gary, I'm scared, said the woman. I hate tea, said the boy, and I hate ghosts. They did not know that Leo was floating above them. He, he heard everything they said. The family called in a scientist, a clergyman, and a psychic to get rid of the ghost. But they should have saved their money. Leo knew he was unwanted. He said goodbye to his home and left. I have been a house ghost all of my life, Leo thought. Maybe I, I would like being a roaming ghost for a while. So Leo roamed. Leo saw the city and the people who lived there. Nobody saw Leo. The city was, like, was not like Leo remembered it. Some places were wonderful. Some places were scary. Everywhere was so noisy. Leo went to a street corner where his favorite candy store used to be. Now nothing was there. I excuse me, he asked the police officer. Do you know where? The officer walked right through him. 
There was an afternoon when Leo found himself roaming along a sidewalk covered in drawings. He came across a girl holding chalk in her hand. The girl looked up at, and stared at Leo. I'm Jane, she said. What's your name? It was so strange to be looked at that at first Leo said nothing. Finally, he replied, I'm Leo. Jane nodded. Leo, do you want to play Knights of the Round Table? Yes, Leo said, because he did. Good, said Jane. First, you have to be knighted by the king. Who's the king, Leo asked. I am, said Jane. That's why I'm wearing this crown on my head. Leo looked at her head. He did not see a crown. Still, he kneeled down and was knighted on the spot. Leo and Jane sat at a table. Sir Leo, said Jane, meet Mr. Russ, a loyal dog. Don't you think he looks handsome in his armor? Yes, said Leo. He bowed to an empty chair. And Sir Leo, said Jane, this is Sir Muse, a loyal cat. Don't you find his whiskers wise looking? I do, said Leo, and he bowed again. And finally, said Jane, this is Sir Squawks. Leo interrupted, a, a loyal bird. Jane frowned. No, she said, Sir Squawks is a giant hamster. Oh, said Leo, well, I, I'm not wearing my glasses. Jane squinted at the chair. I guess, she said. Jane, a woman's voice came from another room. Tell your imaginary friends goodbye and come down to dinner. Fine, said Jane. She turned to Leo. My mom doesn't think imaginary friends are worthwhile, but I think you're great. And with that, she stood up and went to the kitchen. Leo felt awful. She thinks I'm imaginary, he thought. If I tell her I'm a ghost, I'll scare her away. After dinner, Jane returned to her room and gave Leo a sword. They snuck into a cave and slew a dragon and stole all his loot. When Leo closed his eyes, he could almost see the gold coins and green scales. After a glorious feast, it was time for bed. Jane gave Leo a pillow and a sheet. Don't, tear, don't tell Sir Ruffs, she said, but you are my best imaginary friend. Yes, said Leo. He was so happy he couldn't sleep. Leo went to the living room so he wouldn't uh, wake Jane with his rustling. All night he lay on the floor designing his coat of arms. And so Leo was awake when a sneak thief climbed through the window. Halt, cried Leo. But the thief passed through Leo on his way to the silverware. Later, Leo would not be able to say where the ideal came from. He threw a bed sheet over himself and flew at the thief, who was so frightened he dropped all the salad forks. Leo chased the man into a closet, then slammed the door shut and locked him inside. It was all very well done. The sound of the door woke Jane, who called the police and roused her mother. A squad car came and hauled the man to jail, off to jail. That was that. Thanks, said Jane. You're welcome, said Leo. I'm glad I could help. But Leo, said Jane, if you're, a if you're my imaginary friend, how, how did you scare that robber? Leo looked down at the carpet. Jane, I, I told you a lie. I'm a ghost. I said I was your imaginary friend, but I'm not. I'm just your real friend. Oh, said Jane. Well, that's even better. And they went to the kitchen to have mint tea and honey toast at midnight. The end. So, before I get into some questions and some other and uh, some other fun activities, um, I want to talk a bit about the pictures in the book. Oh, <laughs> whoops! Making pictures. <laughs> so how? So as the illustrator, I make all the pictures in the book. So how do I go about doing that? I start small. What does that mean, to start small? It means that before I make all the art in the book, I have to do what's called storyboards, which are like little teeny tiny doodles, little teeny tiny sketches. And actually those, those little yellow pieces of paper you see are this small, they're so teeny tiny. 
And starting small helps me just to kind of think about what little, what, what do I want to put on the page? Where do I want the characters to go? And not get overwhelmed by the colors and the, and the backgrounds and all those sorts of things. And I make lots and lots of mistakes. People ask, how do I get my drawings to look the way they do? Well, it's because I keep trying. I keep trying and keep trying until I get it just right. And that's actually my desk where you see all the post-it notes that didn't really work out. So I throw them away and keep trying. Now, what's this? These are a bunch of kids wearing different costumes. Because Leo, he's from the past. And he wears, he wears an, an outfit from the past. So I had to do research. And you know where I like to do research? A place with lots and lots of books. Does anyone know a place with lots and lots of books? Can anyone think of a place? Yeah? A library. I love going to the library and finding old images and old pictures and things that help me inspire, help inspire the work and the characters. This is an old home that Leo could have lived in. It's called a colonial home. And there's the art where you see the home. And how did I make these pictures? I like to use paint, but I also like to cut out paper and paste it down. Does anyone know what that's called, that type of art where you cut up pieces of paper and you paste them down? Yeah? Collage. I love working in collage. These are some old toys that Leo might have played with. That's an old rocking horse. And look, there is his room. And if you look up, you can see the little cut out piece of paper where the, the rocking horse is taken out and then glued down onto the page. That's Jane. There's so many ways you can make, I could have made Jane look. I could have given her pigtails or ponytails or poof balls. But then I gave her little braids and a little barrette. That's what Leo could have looked like. He could have looked more like a ghost. But here he is, more like a boy. And that's my studio where you can see all the art that I pin up. So I'd like to invite the author, Mac Barnett, to the stage. Because, oh, you might be wondering why, where I, why am I wearing this crown on my head? It is because I am a king. Mac is also a king. And as kings, <laughs> as kings, we can, what, what can kings do, Mac? Well, we're qualified to knight people. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make everybody here knights today. Um, but first, we have to tell you, a knight has something very special. All knights have something very special. And it's sort of a secret of this book that we're going to share with you now. Christian, you want to do the honors? Bum, ba, ba, bum. <gasps> now there's a little shield here with pictures on it. And the shield with pictures on it has a special name. Does anybody know what the name of that kind of shield is? It's, oh, do we know back there? A crest, that is, it is, it is a crest. It is also called a coat of arms. And that's the name we use in the book. Remember, Leo can't sleep, so he goes down to design his coat of arms. And a coat of arms is just something a knight has that has that knight's favorite thing. So what's on Leo's coat of arms, Christian? So on Leo's coat of arms, we see some of Leo's favorite things. Does anyone remember what Leo's favorite snack was that he made for the host, for the family that he was hosting? Anyone over here? Mint tea and honey toast. So I have a little slice of toast, a cup of tea, and we even see a little rocking chair. Maybe that's Leo's favorite toy. So we would like everybody here to make their own coat of arms, but first we thought it would be good if we ran through an example. So I don't know if there's a brave volunteer in our audience anywhere. <sighs> oh, and it's kind of hard to see, but <laughs> there we go. And there we are. Well, there we go. Yes, you. Oh, here but we go. The voice booms out. All right. What is your name? Felice. Felice. Everybody give Felice a round of applause. So brave, Felice. Our brave knight. All right, Felice, I have some questions for you. And these are questions that I ask all of our knights. First question is, did you have a good summer? Yep. What was like the best thing you did all summer? Your favorite thing? Your favorite part of the summer? Seeing the sunset and seeing the geese fly away from me. Wow. Watching a sunset while geese flew away from you. That's a great image. 
I think, I think you're thinking about this coat of arms too. You're like, this coat of arms is gonna look good. You're know, like, and seeing the dolphins and the whales sound below me as an eagle made an oil painting. <laughs> All right, Felice, I have another question for you. Have you ever eaten food before? Yep. Good. That's good. That's good. And by the way, I recommend to all of our worthy knights, please eat food and drink water. Felice, what is your favorite food of all the foods? Um, sandwich. A sandwich. And you like, what do you like in the sandwich? What are, what are your favorite sandwich fillings? Um, salad, ham, and tomato. All right, so that's a pretty thick sandwich right there, right? Yeah, sa salad, ham, and tomato. All right, Felice, my final question, and maybe the most important one. What is your favorite animal? Uh, a wolf. A wolf. Why? Because they matched me, because I'm wild, and I speak, and I howl that much. Because you're wild, and you speak, and you howl a bunch. Oh, Felice, we are going to have a good coat of arms over here. So our royal artist is over here, he is busy at work. You can tell he's a royal artist because he's wearing a crown and he's drawing. So let's take a look at what he's up to. There it is, the coat of arms of Felice the Brave. Oh, fantastic. Now, Felice, we're almost done, but we're not done quite yet. Not only is Christian qualified to make coat of arm, a coat of arms. Oh, and how do you spell your name, Felice? F-E-L-I-C-E. -E. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> All right, you nailed it. You win the National Spelling Bee. That's what this is, right? Is this not? Oh. Okay, now Christian is not only qualified to make coat of arms, but he's also qualified to knight people. So, Felice, we have to get down on one knee right now. Now, Felice, this sword is gonna come kind of close to your head, but don't worry. <laughs> it's just gonna tap your shoulders lightly three times. Let's all count together. Please rise. Felice the Brave. A round of applause. Oh, fantastic. All right, grab your seat, Felice, and we'll make sure you get your coat of arms. All right, now, we would like to knight everybody here. But before we do that, you have to take the knight's vows. What are vows? Vows are like promises, things that you have to agree to do. So we are going to ask you if you will promise to do some things, and you have to say yes. But you can't just say yes the way ordinary people say yes. You have to say the yes the way knights say yes. What's that? Hi. Can we, yeah. Can we try to say that all together? Hi. Oh, very good. All right. Are you ready for the knight's vows? Good. Good. Some people get tricked by that. You guys, this is a sharp crowd. Do you swear to protect the weak and defenseless? Do you swear to work for the good of all, be they person, beast, or ghost? Aye. Do you swear to live for honor and for glory? Aye. Do you swear to persevere to the end of any endeavor begun, including a very long set of vows? Aye. Do you swear to honor your fellow knights, especially Sir Ruffs the Handsome, Sir Muse the Wise, and Sir Squawks the Giant Hamster? Aye. Do you swear to never turn your back upon a foe? It's kind of a hesitation on that one. You're like, how big is this foe? Does this foe work out a bunch? Do you swear this in the spirit of loyalty? Aye. Wisdom? Aye. Sagacity? Aye. Which is basically wisdom? Aye. Truth? Aye. Beauty? Aye. Friendship? Aye. And snacks? Aye. You are all knights. Let's count it out. One, two, three. Three cheers, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray. Oh, thank you very much. So, 
Are there any questions from the audience? Questions about illustrating books? Questions about how I make the pictures? Questions about ghosts or imaginary friends? Any questions? Hmm? Yes, you have a question? What's your question? If it comes back to you, yeah? Yeah? Okay. And the other? Yeah, sure. You guys. So you get the story first and then you draw the pictures, or does it, is it like a process where you work together? That's a good question. So in this case, the story came first. Mac wrote this really great story, and then it came to me, and it was my job to kind of just use my imagination and figure out what I wanted the pictures to look like. Yeah. You have a question over here? With anyone else with for your with your drawings, do you work with anyone else to help you with your drawings? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm, I don't know if I work with other people to help me with my drawings, but I know that in order to make drawings, I need to constantly be inspired, and I do look at a bunch of different artwork from other artists and other things that sort of inspire me. So in a way, I feel like I am working with different p artists to help me figure out what I want to draw. Yeah. Let's see, we have a question over here. Yeah. Are you scared of ghosts? Ooh, am I scared of ghosts? Hmm. Well, I'm curious. Are you scared of ghosts? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. OK, because ghosts can be scary. Are you scared of Leo? Even Leo? <laughs> hmm. Well, I used to be scared of ghosts, but then I met Leo. And Leo, I, he reminded me that ghosts can be really friendly and they just kind of want friends. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Any other questions? Maybe. Oh, over here we have a question. Does it take, does it take a long time? Whoa. Does it take a long time to illustrate a book? It can take a long time. It took me about three to four months to illustrate this whole book, um, which is like making like 50 paintings in that amount of time, and all those sketches too. It takes sometimes even longer to write a book. I think it took Mac four years to write this book. But he had the idea for a very, very long time. Okay, let's see. Maybe uh, any other questions? Oh, over here we have tons of questions. Okay, can we, yeah, come. Very brave question asker. Here we go. Do you ever laminate the books? Do I ever laminate the books? I don't laminate the books because I don't have a laminating machine. Or, but if I did, I would totally laminate books. But I love it when librarians laminate books because it makes me feel special. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have a question. Yeah. How do you know what to write about? Ooh, that would be a good question for the author, Mac. So I've actually never written a book. I've only illustrated a book. And I know how what to illustrate because of what Mac has written. It helps me figure out what I want the story, what sort of story I want to tell with pictures. Yeah, thank you. All right, maybe just a few more questions. Yes, one over here. <gasps> Will there ever be a Leo 2? Will there ever be a sequel? Hmm, Mac, what do you know? What do you think? <laughs> Maybe. Anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe one last question. Yes. How do you put the cover on? How do I put the cover on? Hmm. <laughs> How do I make the cover? Um, so Leo's cover, let's see, I made the cover by, by the way, does anyone know what you call this part of the book, the cover? It actually has another name. So that's the book case, but what do you think this is called? It's like a, a piece, an article of clothing that we wear sometimes when it's cold outside. Yeah? A coat, a book coat, or a book jacket. 
And a book jacket has flaps like this, like little wings. And so the book, oh, a book also has a, a spine right there. And so this cover is pretty much, I use like black and blue paint. And then I cut out Leo with paper and I glued him on there. And then in the computer, I put in the words, Leo, a ghost story. And that's kind of how I, how I made this cover. All right. Well, thank you guys so very much. <laughs> this has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.